Since the first half of 2023, I've relied exclusively on Linux for my desktop PC, which serves as my primary machine for both gaming and productivity. In a previous video, I detailed my gaming experiences on a Linux PC, which have been overwhelmingly positive. Recent updates to NVIDIA drivers have further enhanced the gaming experience. Today I want to delve into the productivity aspect of my Linux journey, focusing on how I've navigated the challenges posed by the lack of Adobe software. Switching from Windows or Mac OS to Linux often brings a significant challenge due to the limited availability of commercial software on Linux. For many, myself included, Adobe's suite of tools is the biggest hurdle. Like many of you, I face this dilemma when considering the switch. Fortunately, most of the tools I need are accessible through a browser or have native Linux versions. Adobe, despite its industry standard creative tools, has a mixed reputation online. It's challenging to find anyone who praises the company and recent changes to their terms of service have only exacerbated the negative sentiment. Adobe products are exceptional, making them difficult to replace in professional settings. However, there's been a noticeable trend of users seeking alternatives, driven primarily by dissatisfaction with Adobe's subscription model, which prevents users from owning the software. For non-professionals like myself, the high cost of Adobe subscriptions is prohibitive. Paying $60 per month is unreasonable for hobbyists, who only use a fraction of the available features. Thankfully, there are cheaper or even free alternatives available on Windows or Mac OS. Affinity Photo, for example, is often recommended as a cost-effective alternative to Photoshop. Right now, they are even offering a six-month free trial, so I think you should really check it out. Unfortunately, such programs are not available on Linux, making it difficult for those who depend on Photoshop to switch operating systems. Luckily, I'm not a heavy Photoshop user, and a free alternative like Photopea is all I ever need. So, how do I edit my photos and videos without Adobe on Linux? Let's start with video editing. A few years ago, I began learning basic video editing. At that time, Adobe Premiere Pro was the go-to editor for beginners due to the abundance of tutorials available on YouTube. However, it frequently crashed on my mid-spec PC, eventually forcing me to upgrade my hardware. Even after upgrading, it remained unstable for my relatively simple projects. I also tried Final Cut Pro on my then 2017 MacBook Pro, but ultimately I preferred working on a PC. The inability to seamlessly work across my Windows PC and MacBook made Final Cut Pro impractical for me. So I switched to DaVinci Resolve. Its free version made the transition easy. Since I create simple videos, the choice of editor wasn't critical as long as it was stable. When I decided to fully embrace Linux, I was pleased to find that DaVinci Resolve has a Linux version that works perfectly. There is one issue. On Linux, DaVinci Resolve doesn't support AAC audio. This means Resolve cannot decode or encode AAC audio tracks in video footage due to licensing issues. This can be a deal breaker for many since most modern cameras and smartphones use the AAC codec for audio recording. The workaround is to convert AAC audio using a command before importing it into Resolve for editing. Since I don't have much footage with AAC audio, this isn't a significant issue for me. Over the past few years, DaVinci Resolve has performed well on my Linux PC with rare crashes. I can export project files and continue working on my MacBook seamlessly. Earlier this year, I even started freelancing as a video editor, earning a few hundred dollars, which has been very rewarding. I have never been a heavy Photoshop user, but I am a hobbyist photographer. For many years, Adobe Lightroom was my most used program, essential for organizing and editing my raw photos. The absence of Lightroom or comparable commercial raw editors on Linux was a significant issue for me. For a while I used Capture One on my MacBook, but my desktop PC is much faster, and constantly using dongles for importing and editing photos was frustrating. I explored alternatives on Linux and found two promising options, Darktable and Raw Therapy. Both are open source and available on Windows and Mac OS. 
they are powerful but come with a steep learning curve. Sadly, despite my efforts, I couldn't achieve the desired look with these editors. I watched many tutorials but often ended up confused. This is likely because I didn't invest enough time in learning these programs. As a hobbyist, I don't have unlimited time to learn new software. Nowadays, I am more focused on learning DaVinci Resolve as I use it more frequently. And then one day I discovered a YouTuber called Cullen Kelly, a colorist sharing amazing color grading tutorials. His content inspired me to apply these color grading techniques to my still photos. After some research, I developed a workflow that satisfies my needs. First, I convert some of my raw files into a format that DaVinci Resolve supports. I use two cameras, a Canon 5D Mark III, whose files are already supported by Resolve, and a Panasonic S5. For the S5, I use Darktable to convert the files into the OpenXR format, which Resolve can handle without issues. Then I create two timelines in Resolve, one for horizontal images and one for vertical. This setup makes it easier to switch between the orientations. I plan to make a video showcasing my entire workflow in the future if there's interest. For now, here's a brief overview. I start with a simple color space transform followed by some basic adjustments. After a few tweaks here and there, right-click on the image and choose Grab Still. Then on the gallery panel you can just export the image to a JPEG file. Although the interface can be intimidating at first, once I figured out a workflow that suited me, I found it surprisingly easy to achieve the look I wanted. One of the things I appreciate most about Resolve is the abundance of high-quality tutorials available online. While DaVinci Resolve is not a complete replacement for Lightroom, it comes close. I still use Darktable to organize and convert files, and I might need another program for cropping images to my desired dimensions. However, this combination works well for me so far. I hope that Blackmagic will consider adding more features for still photo editing in the future. In conclusion, living an Adobe-free life on Linux is entirely possible, even for hobbyists passionate about photo and video editing. With some effort and the right tools, Linux can be a viable operating system for creative work. Thanks for watching.